Hello everyone, are you ready for another adventure? It's me, Wookie, and I'm back with some more fake Grand Order talking, even though I've been doing it a whole bunch. But either way, uh, it finally got announced that the summer camp, uh, Servant Summer Camp is going to be coming up. It's the next event. Like, a lot of people were expect. I guess it was kind of divided. Some people really wasn't expecting them to go out of order and to skip comma. But after they basically, you know, showed this on stream, it seemed pretty obvious that the next summer... Um, summer was going to be the next event to come up, mainly because um, in this event, Castoria is actually a raid-up unit, <clears throat> so they did probably didn't want to release this banner when she was gone, so there was just no way for them to release Kama, so Kama got moved back up, so if you're waiting for Kama, you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer, but in today's video, I'm going to be going over specifically the Part 1 Summer Units and the Male Servants that are coming out for Summer. I hope you liked the video. If you do, you can leave a like, comment down below, tell me how you plan to be going. I know a lot of people wanted Kama to show up first because they wanted to have just a little bit more savings for when uh, Summer Camp showed up. So, if you're ready, especially after Castoria, if you're ready or not, tell me. Um, and subscribe to me if you want some more videos featuring me. And yeah, let's get into it. So, uh, from what I remember of this event, this event's actually very easy. It's actually also horror themed because in Japan, um, it's the summer is when they actually celebrate um, uh, Halloween's type stuff with horror movie stuff. I just realized that it's not on here. So, whoop, whoop, whoop. I'm gonna have to go all the way back here and click on it. Here we go. Here we go. So, yeah. Summer U, Concert U, Lancer will be here. She'll be the temporary unit, and then we can make the. She'll be the free unit. And by completing the mission, you can get her fully uh, unlocked. Here's the funny thing. if You you only need Fuyuki to actually do this event. So if you're someone going like, Oh man, I'm probably going to have to do Lost Belt 3 in order to actually do it. You don't have to actually clear Lost Belt 3. I know you're also thinking, Doesn't that create some kind of weird time paradox? Where this story technically could take place during a time in which Concert U is supposed to be dead. Uh, I don't, all I have to say is I think they handle it in some way. I think what they do is they give her shades and <laughs> say, oh, that doesn't look anything like this senpai that if I saw them, that would totally ruin a surprise. It's really silly. Um, it's really, just really silly in general. It's, it's funny how they kind of put themselves in a corner for this one <laughs> and how little they seem to care for it. You will get Child Caldea fi Pathfinder, which is the new Mystic Code, of course. A new costume dress for MASH over here. Finally, she'll be updated once again. We'll get costume dresses for the three males, which are, for the first time um, they've, they've done this, it is two fours and a five. Previously, it was usually at least one three, so that you could have, um, if you weren't, uh, if you could not, I get, what am I trying to say here? Is that basically it was easier to at least have, you could always have the three male servant. There's no guarantee you'll have any of the four ones. But at least the four one is Emiya, who is basically the equivalent of a three star servant based off of how easy it is to get him. At least in my opinion. So we got Long, Long Ling Wang, Sigurd, and Emiya. So those three right there getting their own special uh, costume dress. And next, and they are also of course their own summon banner that you can see right here. Uh, whether you want to summon on this is tidally up to you. Emmy is a very good unit. Lang Ling, I think it, I don't actually know much about him. I have him, but I haven't actually used them. Wait, what are you? You are a... Okay, so you're really more for challenge quest here, based off of what I'm seeing here. So it's going to definitely kind of depend on what kind of playstyle you like. There is a place for those kind of units, but you have to kind of look into yourself. Sigurd, for a very long time, has been someone who is... Um, questionable in his, some of his skills. This skill, not the greatest. This skill, not the greatest. They finally did buff him. This skill, much better. Uh, it used to be much worse, and now it's much better. Um, his Noble Phantasm, perfectly fine. Probably still needs a couple more buffs just to kind of get up there with Siegfried, is my guess, but... If you like him, he is, of course, <clears throat> voiced by Seto Kaiba, the Japanese Seto Kaiba, and so he's awesome in that regard. So if you want him to have him for that reason, I don't default you. That's the reason I would ever want him, that's for sure. 
Now let's actually get into the Lady Summer. <clears throat> we have Brunhilda, Berserker, Ilya, Archer, and Kiara, Moon Cancer. So let's go into Brunhilda, start with her. She's a three buster, one arts, one quick. First skill, Savante Swim Mystics Code Summer A+. Grants self evasion for two attacks, three turns. Reduces own damage taken for three attacks, three turns. <clears throat> the damage reduced is 1,000. Okay. Okay skill. Ah, uh, five turn cooldown, that's alright. For Berserker, it helps a little bit, I guess. You, though, usually with Berserkers, you kind of want Guts, because it's actually very easy. I guess this is enough evasion to make it not so bad that she won't instantly get destroyed, but you usually want some form of Guts, because it helps. Charges on MP gauge every turn for three turns. Gain crit stars every turn for three turns. MP regen 20%, 10 star regen. Alright, not bad. Summertime Lovers increase on Arts Performance for 3 turns, increased on Bust Performance for 3 turns, increased Arts Performance of Brunhilde's Beloved Allies Except Herself for 3 turns, increased Buster Performance from Brunhilde's Love Beloved Allies Except for Herself for 3 turns, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, 30%, Passive Skills, Madness Enhancement, D-, increases on Buster Performance by 3.5%, Divinity E, increased on Damage by 100, the Pen Skills, I think her third skill is related to the Lancer class, Inner Noble Phantasm is a buster, which ignores invincibility for one turn, deals damage to all enemies, and increases buster performance for one turn, 100%, 20%, and overcharge one is 20%, uh, buster, and then at the end it's 60% for one turn. She is, uh, okay, not the greatest buster gorilla in the world, but a decent one, not a lot of survivability. The issues of NP gauge are there because it's 20% is nice, but it's like you don't get it right away. <laughs> it charges it for every turn, 20%, but it's, you know, there are better ones out there. Buster at this point in Japan at least is used kind of with Tamamo and stuff like that, Tamamovich. So her skills could definitely be looped together inside them, but... She doesn't really seem to have that great of a way to have... The 20% is basically not enough. Just because Busters don't really have... They're not like Arts and Quick. <clears throat> where they can easily get their stuff back. So them having a decent way of getting their NP gauge back is kind of important. And they don't really... She doesn't really have that. 20% is nice, but it's not enough from what I can tell. But still, pretty solid for a summer unit. Um... And for a lot of, as I know specifically for this event, it doesn't really matter if you can three turn a lot of stuff, you can't. So she would probably work fantastic in that kind of environment where you can just do whatever and do good. Okay, next we got Ilya von Eisenberg. Eisenburn. Also, in theory, I think I've seen this around, which I'm not 100% sure because I don't play in Japan. But in Japan, it sounds like a lot of the grinding is not actually what we do here, which is using the support uh, casters. But it's actually using the, um, the units themselves buffed with the 50% uh, starting NP from craft essences that you get. And being able to kind of just blast through them and deal no mine and in that case I think she would probably do pretty well in that kind of situation uh, I can't really speak too much about that but that seems to be working out from what I understood from what someone said about in Japan because a lot of their craft essences so the main reason we do the whole support servant kind of looping business for three turning it is because it's the most efficient way of doing it while having craft essences of the things that you're grinding but in Japan if the specific um, uh, grind node, the craft essence they give you is a 50% starting one, that makes it much easier to grind, because usually they aren't that. Most of them are no NP grind, and then you just gotta deal with it. So that's why a lot of people default to looping. But if they all give you at least 50% starting NP, that gives you more to work with. In theory, you could then, um, just use servants with 50% NP charges and go to town and hope that they have enough damage at that point. Um, that's again assuming that's how it's like on JP right now. I don't actually know because I don't play JP. I just kind of look at it, but I haven't actually played it. So something to keep in mind. In that kind of environment, this skill is much better because you can just do pop this turn one, and then by the final turn she should have enough to actually go to town. I think. I think anyway. Anyway, let's go into Ilya von Eisenberg Archer. She is two quicks, two arts, one buster. 
her active skill. High pressure A, increase on quick performance for three turns. Increase on crit star absorption of quick cards for one turn. Increase on crit damage for one turn. Quick is 20%, quick absorption 500%, crit, uh, crit damage is 100%. Second skill, summer vacation, children A, grant self invincibility for one turn for one attack with three turns. Increase on MP generation for three turns. Increase of the attack of children servant allies for three turns. MP rate is 30%, 20% for children. Uh, 20% attack to children. Regal Shower B++ charges on NP gauge, increases on crit damage for 3 turns. 70% chance to recover own HP by 500 every turn for 5 turns. 30% NP and 50% crit damage. Her passive skills, Magic Resistance A, Independence Action B, Ultimate Prana Supply C, increases on debuff resistance by 20%, increases on crit damage by 8%, and charges own NP gauge by 3% every turn. Her final uphand skill is an increased attack against archer enemies. <clears throat> and her noble, pa uh, noble phantasm is a quick prisma splash rainbow O oh, maiden become a rainbow anti army deals damage to all enemies five hits, and it deals 600% damage at MP level one and at level five it's a thousand. Overcharge effect increase own um, quick performance for one turn activates first. Same thing goes for arts and buster. It's 10% 10% 10% at charge one. And at the final charge, it's 50% for each, so it's an increment of 10%. And that's Ilya. I think she actually sounds pretty good for a quick kind of uh, farmer, is what I assume the most would try and use her for. The reason is, is that she has her own ability to charge her own NP gauge, which is pretty key on this uh, issue here. She increases her quick performance. It's not a lot, but because she also kind of increases her quick in her Noble Phantasm by at least 10%, you can assume at least 30% up to quick. Uh, when using it uh, and the most important part is that she actually gr increases her ONP generation for three turns 30% is not too bad to think about when you look at certain servants like um, let me go over to them because he's the ultimate quick servant for the most part the reason being of course he increases his own in NP generation by 50% 30% still pretty nice and also having a lot of hits so she probably probably it would kind of have to depend on some stuff because I'd have to test her I don't know if you depend on the NP level um, but she should in theory be able to loop with quick probably not the most damaging or probably not the most cleanest as well to be 100% honest with you but she should be able to do it in theory anyway she has the kind of setup to do it um, so that's pretty good Pretty nice quick servant, but in general she is an Ilya. It's weird because usually I think they would save an Ilya for... Actually, I don't know, because I always thought that Ilya they wouldn't do just because she's usually tied to Prisma Ilya. But I kind of like the idea of them just saying like, hey, just bring her out in summer, it's fine. Um, that makes me get, gives me hope of maybe eventually seeing Shiki as a summer unit. I think in this specific one they also tease another... Collab unit, which I won't mention, just so you everyone can kind of, I guess, see it and experience it at the same time. But still, pretty nice unit. And now, the actually best unit, it's no comparison for the other ones, Kiara Summer Moon Cancer. <clears throat> Alright, so, one quick, two arts, two buster. Her active skills, Mermaid Flesh EX, grant self gut status for one time, five turns. Remove own debuffs, recover zone HP every turn for three turns, increase own NP damage by 20% for three turns, it grants self mermaid nourishment regenerative buff for four turns. Mermaid nourishment grants the skill rank up buff four turns for every turn for four turns. Skill rank up, you use the rank up the second and third skill maximum two rank up per skill can stack. Skill rank ups are used to rank up skills will be consumed, a guts and 20% 200% uh, HP regen. <clears throat> Next, her second skill, there's three levels, because depending, again, on the stacks you have, it changes. Um, with no stacks, Supernatural Power Inc. B charges on NP gauge, gains crit stars, 30% and 20. When you have a stack, um, it is 40% NP and 25 stars. When you remove two skill up ranks, it's 50% NP and 30 stars. Third skill is the Calm Palace, Grant, grants the party an evasion for one attack, three turns, remove all enemies, ignore evasion buffs, inflicts bewitchment, debuff to them for three turns, bewitchment reduces critical attack chance by 10%, reduces their defense for three turns, and reduces their arch resistance by 20% for three turns, 
that's at no stacks. With one stack, the effect then changes into you inflict two stacks of bewitchment, the debuff to them for three turns. Bewit bewitchment reduces critical attack chance by 10%, reduces their defense for three turns, reduces their arch resistance by 25% for three turns, and then, yeah, I think the defense also is lowered to 25% instead. And then finally, if you remove two skill up ranks, you want to give them three stacks of bewitchment. They all still reduce critical attack chance by 10%. Um, you reduce their defense for three turns, it's 30%. Reduce their arch resistance by 30%. And, and the, the evasion is the same throughout, and then it still removes their ignore evasion buff as well. Her passives are Territory Creation EX, Increase Own Arts Performance by 12%. Spiritual World Creation EX, Increase Own NP Damage by 12%. Independent Manifestation E, Increases Own Critical Damage by 2%. Increases Own Mental Debuff Resistance by 2%. And Increases Own Insta-Kill Resistance by 2%. And Logos Eater D, Increases Own Defense Against Humanoid Enemies by 14%. Her pen skills, her third skill, is an uh, increase to cast your enemies. And her Noble Phantasm, the Heaven's Foam, is a rank, an arts card, three hits, deals damage to all enemies, deals 100% plus 20% extra damage to enemies with mental debuffs. And mental debuffs maxes the 10 stacks, and that includes the things that she gives. So if they're asleep, if they have bewitchment, if they're charmed, if they have the charm resistance down, if they have anything that is considered a debuff, it it is included. If they are stunned, if they have terror, if they're in eternal sleep, whatever. At level 1, the damage is 450%. Uh, At MP5, it is 750%. Chance to insta-kill them, it is 100%. <laughs> At charge level 1, and 500 is 150%. Okay, this unit is fucking bonkers, is the nicest way of saying it. This unit is dumb, stupid, good. So, something that is different. Because most, if you remember if I said most instant kill units, um, when it comes to quick and arts, are bad. Uh, the reason is, is that when you kill them, if when you insta-kill them, usually... Usually, when you insta-kill them, um, it removes your ability to get NP buff because they instantly die and it's the end of it and you don't deal any damage to them. Kiara is different in that she actually inflicts damage first and then has a chance to insta-kill them, so she still hits them. So that means that she still gets NP gain from that. And combine that with the fact that she can be run with Castoria and uh, her being arts, and in general, her NP gain is very good. I've been, I used her in uh, Japan, and this is probably still true over there as far as I'm aware of. This unit is insanely good, and it seems like they specifically made her for Castoria. <laughs> At least that's what it feels like. This ability right here, where she gives them just a whole bunch of stacks, means that basically on turn 3, any everything is dying. Nothing is surviving this. The amount of debuff that you're giving them and then just making yourself stronger means that it's actually extremely hard to not instantly merc whatever you're going for. She's crazy strong even at NP level 1 with 450% damage. You think like, oh man, that means she's probably not as good. No. If they had made this any higher, she'd be too good. <laughs> she's crazy. She's 100% crazy, worth having, and is probably the best summer unit in this entire batch, and is the one I definitely want the most. Usually the one thing that holds back most Moon Cancers is they don't deal enough damage because they don't really have type advantage over anything. She doesn't really have that problem at all, as you can see here, probably because just the amount of like debuffs, the fact that she gets more damage for, it doesn't matter what debuff, even the useless debuffs, she gets uh, power from those. It just makes her crazy strong, so it's probably hard to describe this unit without actually having them, but I'm just going to tell you right now, this unit's worth having. It's not only the fact that she's wearing some fantastic Little Mermaid outfit and stuff like that. She's actually 100% worth having, and I can't wait to summon. This is definitely the unit now that I have Castoria, I'm now afraid that I'm not going to get. I was able to get her very easily on the JP version similar to Castoria, though, so I hope that kind of can travel through. If I can make it this entire summer and not get any summer unit but Kiara, I'd be bummed, first of all, because the actual other uh, banner has two units that I would want, which is Shigabu and Tomoe. 
Um, and I like Abby as a, as a person, so I wouldn't mind having, even though her unit is maybe not the greatest in the world. Um, but if I just get Kiara, that's a victory in my eyes, so... I will go over the other units when it comes close time to for them to be out. Just to kind of talk about them when they're actually close by. But yeah, that's basically it. And in terms of the craft essence, I may as well just look at them right now. Uh, we got Honey Lake, which grants self pierce invincibility, deals at 35% extra damage against enemies in the burn status. Happy Drive, Arts and Crit and NP gain. Okay, Horror Concierge, deals bonus damage to the undead, which is really only good for this event because there's going to be a lot of undead. So not the most breakout craft essences in the world. No 50% stuff like that. Nothing too amazingly breakout. So it really is. A lot of it is the summer units. <clears throat> but yeah, that's it. That's all I have to say. Man, good luck to you guys. I'll see you guys on the 12th, which is when this event is actually going to be starting out. I'll see you then. Happy grinding until then. See you guys next time. Bye-bye.